Is developing distributed applications locally on your dev machine difficult? Are you tired of hard coding connection strings or URIs? Let's just tie everything together. So if you're new to my channel, I focus a lot on software architecture and design, primarily around .NET and topics like this. So if you enjoy that type of thing, make sure to subscribe. So here's the thing, most applications written now, for the most part, are distributed applications. So if you're developing any type of application where you're talking to a data source that is either out of process, like a relational database that's likely living on another server, or if you're deploying in the cloud, guess what? You have a distributed application. You don't necessarily need to be doing microservices to have really a distributed application. With distributed applications, especially now when we're talking about something like that's really distributed and you have a lot of them like microservices, how you deal with communication between all these services or between a database or um, some other web service that you're communicating to, whether you own it or don't. Um, the key thing here is when you're developing locally, how do you deal with all that? Well, the beauty of things like Docker make this easier. But in the .NET space, if you have a lot of projects that you need to run locally um, because there's a lot of intercommunication or there are different services, worker services are picking up on queues and you need to everything to run together, that can be a little different. It can be a little bit difficult. So a cool project came up by Microsoft, which is called Project Tie. So that's what I'm going to dig in right now. I'm going to show you how specifically you can use this with your application specifically. Um, locally in a distributed application. All right, to kind of show how Tai works, what I've done is I've created a .NET new web application, which doesn't do a heck of a lot. Just um, what I have here is I have endpoint routing where I have one uh, route, which is this the slash. And what this is doing is this is using the distributed cache where I'm gonna be getting out a date time. If it doesn't exist in the cache, we'll basically add it to the date time or to the cache with an expiry of five seconds from now and then just return that result. So we're using distributed cache here. And again, when I mentioned about a distributed application, that's kind of the point is I have my app and I have this uh, cache that is I'm going to use is Redis. So in the configure services, I have the add stack exchange Redis cache where we need to find the connection string. But the key here is what is the connection string going to be? If Have I installed this locally? Am I using Docker? Have I mapped it to the default port? If I'm working in a team, are we all following the same convention environment? What if I'm working on another project where I also have a separate Redis uh, Docker container running, but I have them mapped to different ports? So that's what I'm going to be using as this example and how Ty kind of helps this situation here. All right, so the first thing we're actually gonna do is get the Thai global tool. So if you head over to NuGet uh, for Microsoft Thai, you can see this is how you install it, just .NET tool install global Microsoft Thai uh, version as of kind of this recording is 0 0.2. So give that an install, that will give you the global tool. So now I'm just in my PowerShell and I'm in the kind of the root directory where I have this app. This is app one there. That was what we were looking at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do tie init, which is gonna create this YAML file. So if I open up that YAML file, here it is. This is kind of the default out of the box. So what I'm gonna actually do here is create a a kind of definition of what the services are that I actually need to run the app. So kind of the first one here is the name is actually what I called app one. And what I can do, which is kind of neat, is I can actually reference the CS proj file itself. So in this case, it was app one slash app one CS proj. Um, from here, what I need to do is Kind of the second piece is, like I said, I was I want to use Redis, and what I can do is, let's call this one. I'll just give it a name of Redis, and instead of referencing a project because I don't have a .NET project that I'm also going to run, 
I'm going to specify an image. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to be the, the Docker image that I'm going to pull down and run, which is also called Redis. And if you're familiar with creating a Docker file or a, a Docker compose file, this kind of should feel in the same vein. So if you're used to running um, anything in Docker, we're going to need some bindings here. So at this point, I'm going to need a do some port mapping. So I'm just going to use the default with 6379 is the port. And what I can do here, if I could spell right, connection string, is I'm going to do uh, give this the connection string, which I'm going to actually use in our .NET code um, reference to kind of this right here, this connection string. So this is going to be my tie YAML. I'm just basically outlining what my services are going to be. If you had another um, csproj file, you could specify it here as well. Or if you were using um, again uh, SQL Server or Postgres or MySQL or whatever. Mongo, what other other services that you wanted to run that can run in Docker, you would specify those here as well. So now that I have a YAML file, we can actually um, basically jump back to our code and I'll show you how we wire up um, connecting to Redis. So what I can do is pull down this package, which is the Microsoft TIE extension configuration. And you'll see in a second what that enables us to do is this gives us some extension methods on iConfiguration. So when I jump back over to the startup, what I can do here now is I can use configuration, get connection string, and I can specify Redis. Now what this is doing behind the scenes is when we actually run Ty, it is using conventions to basically map what it's going to run Redis as um, to what we defined in that YAML file as that connection string um, right here. All right, so let's run back over here. So now we've got basically Redis wired up um, to what Ty, Ty is going to do uh, when we actually run it. So let's run it. All right, so if I am back in my terminal and I run Ty run, what we'll see here and look at this kind of in detail is we have this dashboard. That's interesting. We'll show that in a second running on port 8000. We are now basically creating a network. We are running an image for Redis. We're building our project, which is our uh, app one project, the .NET project. And it is running on uh, 55046 and 55047 for HTTPS. So that's pretty interesting. What's cool about Redis here, as you can see, is well, let's make this bigger. Now, if I do a Docker PS, you can actually see this is tie running as well as um, our entry point for Redis. So we have Redis running in Docker. Um, which is what we defined. So let's jump back over here and let's first, before I show you the dashboard, I'm gonna actually show you the, actually, you know what? Let's jump into the dashboard first because that's pretty cool. So let's jump over here. All right, so this is the tie dashboard. We can see our project running here. This was app one, that's kind of what we named it. Here's the two bindings that we have. And here's Redis as well. What's super cool about this is there's a few things. One is if I look at logs for this, you're actually seeing um, the output from the Docker run command. So you can see all of that. It's kind of not hidden from you. You can actually see that was happening if you need to troubleshoot anything. If I run back over to um, the logs for our app, this is basically what you would see from the console logs. What I think is really cool is if I click on the name here, what you start seeing is metrics. Now, these are some of the new metrics that are in ASP.NET Core. So you can see um, the current requests, failed requests, requests per second, and a lot of other really cool stuff that you would be getting from performance counters, like, for example, the, the GC count, 
Um, time in GC, if you've dealt with any of this stuff, you will appreciate on being able to see it here. So this is really cool. So you have this dashboard, you can see all the services or apps that you've written that need to kind of run all together. Now, if I go over to our app, I can just click on this. And now that we can see that we are getting hello from app one, and this is the value from our cache. If I refresh, again, it's every five seconds. So this should hit 31 here in a second. There's 30, wait another five seconds. And there we go. So we know we're hitting the cache. We know we're using Redis. If I jump back over to uh, the terminal here, if I just control C again, we're stopping, we're moving everything. So if I do a Docker PS, no more containers running. So again, to me, the emphasis I've seen on Thai relates a lot to, I think people get the sense this is really related to microservices. And I think for sure that would help when you have a lot of services that you need to run locally um, to develop. But I think this can apply to a lot of people that are just developing anything where you maybe you just have a handful, right? Maybe you just have, you have Redis, maybe you have a relational database, maybe you have a couple applications that communicate um, with each other over HTTP and you need them all running when you're, you're firing up your app. So I think this has a lot of benefits. I haven't even touched on the parts related to um, deploying, but to me, where I see myself using this and a lot of the kind of the homegrown tools I've developed over the years um, to kind of do the same types of things, I could see the value in this, especially if you're um, starting on a project or the tools that you have to kind of deal with your local development are a little sketchy. So definitely check out Project I. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.